Brian Wood is our guest in this segment. He is a candidate for Secretary of State, currently the Putnam County Clerk. Brian, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I understand you and Mr. Barrett know each other. Uh, yes, sir. We work, uh, well, I, both of the, the delegate and the center uh, I've worked with throughout the legislature throughout the years, whether it be magistrate or, or the county clerk um, with different bills and stuff. So, uh, yes, I know them both. Very nice. Uh, tell us the uh, your story here, Brian, if you could, uh, where, where you were born and when you went to, where you went to school and what brought you to uh, the Putnam uh, County Clerk's Office. All right. Well, I I, uh, I was born in uh, in Charleston. Uh, moved to Winfield when I was three years old. Still live in the same house I, I grew up in. My father passed away when I was nineteen, and uh, went to school to all th- at all three Winfield uh, schools. Uh, after after graduation, uh, went to Marshall University, graduated with a criminal justice degree. I uh, thought I was going to be a state trooper, and at the time they had a hiring freeze. Uh, so we, b- back then we had we had the people, we just didn't have the money. Now we got the money, but we don't necessarily have the people. Uh, but uh, so, long story short, um, we uh, went to, went to Marshall University, graduated December of '95. In January of 96, I decided to run for magistrate of Putnam County. Uh, I was 23 years old. I uh, was elected to magistrate uh, that year. Uh, was reelected in, that was in 96. In 2000, was reelected. In 2004, uh, I decided to change over to county clerk and ran for county clerk and was elected. Uh, in 2002, I got married. Uh, my beautiful wife of 21 years. Uh, I'm 50 years old. I'm lifelong Republican. Um, we uh, so, so the the purpose of the change of, of the county clerk, you know, magistrate, you're 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 living off of a four year income. Uh, county clerk, you're living off a six year income. And this is this is a job to me. It's not a title. It's not a position. It, it's a, it's a, you know, I went to work for the people of Putnam County. Uh, when I decided that, to get in politics back then, and so um, working on a on a six year budget when you got a family and and uh, we were pregnant with our our first child and uh, which uh, I have two children I have a, a son that's uh, at Fort Jackson right now in his first week of boot camp, and then I have a daughter that's a junior at Winfield High School, uh, but basically. Uh, uh, you know, I I served uh, 26 years of uh, uh, public administration. Um, 18 of those years were involved in election administration uh, through the county clerk. I'm in my fourth term, so two terms as master, four terms as, as county clerk. Um, I'm the only candidate in the race that has a proven track record of secure elections. I'm the only one that's administered elections. Um, and... Uh, I've served as the president of the County Clerks Association, and that's where I, I've met the, the two gentlemen with you today. Um, uh, board, of, um, I was a member of the, uh, uh, member of the Association of Counties Board. Uh, I'm also a member of the Help America Vote Act, which have a grant board for the state of West Virginia. I'm the local representative for the state of West Virginia uh, on the ECA, which is Election Assistance Commission, which is a national board who basically develop standards for the election equipment, uh, poll books, and different things like that. Um, I'm a recipient of the Danny Klein uh, Distinguished Service Award, which is voted on by the peers. So basically, uh, the uh, county courts throughout the state voted uh, that I've, you know, established that that, that, uh, ability to help them and and to, to represent them, different things like that. Uh, and then also I received the National Secretary of State uh, NAS Award uh, for extraordinary efforts in promoting voter engagement. But that's that's kind of it in a nutshell, kind of quick. Um, obviously, I can embellish more if you need. Good summation. I'm, I'm curious about the decision at the age of 23 to run for magistrate. I'm thinking of myself at 23 and the ability to execute that position. You must have been a very mature 23-year-old. Well, when you lose your father, you grow up pretty quick. And, uh, uh, you know, going through school, my, my mom, you know, my father had a, a little uh, business in Charleston, and my mom kind of ran the books for that business. My mom was also going back. She was an at-home mother, and she was going back to school to get her teaching degree. 
you know, the good Lord has a plan. And luckily she was at the end of that whenever dad had passed away. And, uh, I knew that I needed to get, get moving through my college career. And, and when he passed, you know, we ran the business for about two years and then they went and decided to go with one contractor for the whole state. And we were just a little company and, and didn't have the, the equity and the, and, and, the, and the ability to, uh, to keep up with the big guys. Um, it, it's basically like a small, uh, small shop compared to Walmart for us, for us. So we decided to, you know, sell all the, all our trucks and different things like that. And, and, uh, mom went on to be a teacher and, and, uh, I took 21 hours my last semester. Um, and I needed to, you know, help out and get off, the, get off her payroll and, and get on, move, move on with my life. It uh, wasn't easy. Um, it was a, it's a neat, it, you know, it was a neat decision. Uh, if you would have asked me back then, if I, if you thought I was in poli- in politics for for this long, I would say I would say no way. Uh, but I, I, I enjoy people and I enjoy serving people and, and helping people, so it's worked out good for me. Um, uh, Twenty three year years old, yes, is young, um, and I and I do feel I was mature at the time. Uh, you know, the people rewarded me by reelecting me in two thousand, so um, you know Putnam County felt like like I did a good job, and then they, you know, in, in 2004, uh, decided to switch over for family, you know, being being a husband and a father, you know, you got responsibilities there. And uh, we, we, so we, so, you know, it was meet the incumbent uh, that year and, uh, and has been successful ever since. So the people's rewarded me uh, ever since, but I don't take it lightly, you know, it's, it's this, like I say, this is a job to me. Uh, they expect a, a return on their on their vote or their investment. Uh, I, I treat them like customers, and and you know we got I've got a store there that they're coming to. They need to be you know, taken by the hand and and served uh, the way they would I would want to be as I walk through the door. And I've always uh, you know that's my number one rule: treat people like you want to be treated when you, you know if you were there on the other side of the counter. And uh, and, it's, and it's worked out so far. I've I've surrounded myself with with great people throughout the years. Which you know you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. Uh, so that's I how I feel this difficult. morning, Brian. By the way. Oh, listen. That's you're you're not too good today, are you, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, I know you're ready to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, Brian, uh, you're running for Secretary of State. Uh, Mac yes, Warner, the Secretary of State, uh, is running for governor. I have heard some rumors that he may pull out uh, if he does and he decides to run for re-election as Secretary of State. Will you stay in the race or would you drop out? Uh, we would reassess at that point in time. Right now, you know, in, you know as well as I do in politics, you hear every rumor coming and going down the oh, road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you got to kind of let it go in one end, out the other. We're, we're going full steam ahead, uh, my team and I, uh, to, uh, as if we're going to be uh, on the ballot in January. Uh, if he if he pulls out and runs, there may be a possibility that I will still be on the ballot. Uh, it, a lot of it will probably depend on timing. A lot of it will probably depend on uh, what, what I have invested uh, into it already. Um, I'm This is not a – I'm not trying to uh, – diminish uh, his uh, ability to be the secretary of state or anything like that. It's just, uh, you, you know, we all got our, our road to run down and, and I can't let his determine mine. Um, but we're, we're going to move forward as if, uh, as if, you know, the candidates have filed for pre-candidacies uh, for the uh, secretary of state is who's in the race. And uh, we're going to keep on, keep on moving forward. A, a policy question. Uh, A number of years ago, I don't think it was too many, uh, quite a number of states got together and and formed a clearinghouse. I I can't remember what the what the words are, but I think the 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 acronym is ERIC, E-R-I-C, where each state, you know, the, the idea is for each state to say, okay, somebody is registered here. Uh, is he registered in any of your states? Uh, and the person just registered here, uh, you need to clear them off the rolls in your states. And to me, it was a great idea, uh, particularly when it comes to, to the idea of election security. But apparently, 
uh, it got involved in partisan politics. Uh, some Democratic secretaries of state and some and a, and a group of Republican secretaries of state disagreed with something. I really don't know what the problem was, but Ma uh, Mac Warner has pulled us out of it. I think Governor Yunkin in Virginia has pulled Virginia out, and it just seems to me that if in fact there was a problem. The solution would have been to try and get together and fix it uh, rather than uh, le let what appears to me to be uh, a, a bit of, of, of over-partisanship uh, cause some emotional decisions. So I, I just w uh, would like your reaction to that. Um, I have, you know, there's no place for partisan politics when it comes to the Secretary of State's office other than the actual election portion of the secretary of state uh we, we got a job to do and that job is to provide clean uh fair elections for the citizens whether it be a democrat independent or republican uh if it, you know and I'm, I'm going from hearsay because you know obviously i wasn't in the room wasn't the shareholder and or different things like that because i wasn't secretary of state at the time but uh is my understanding that um that there was some you know some politically leaning uh, uh, reasons that that uh, that uh, we pulled out because uh, their, their politics was kind of getting involved in the process of Eric. Uh, Eric, uh, the communication between uh, the states, yes, but but more more so that Eric helped the state identify people who may or may not be. Uh, living where they used to live so um they it would give us a list of people to notify uh, send out a uh, national change of address or ncoa card um and we would notify them saying hey do you live here do you need to update your information is your address correct is and so forth do you still want to be registered to vote in west virginia or do we need to cancel you um uh, is my understanding that the state of west virginia does have a plan in place uh dealing with different vendors um, to identify those people, uh, so so we're not just throwing our hands up and saying, okay, we're not cleansing the cleansing the rolls anymore. But that process has not happened complete. We just we just completed a uh, recently, and people may get them in their mail, you know, as as early as this week, um, a notification card notifying people who may have been removed from the roles saying hey you were removed from the roles you with you know do, do you do you want to re-sign up do you want to get back registered again do, you know we have identified those voters in the in november we will process the the ncua voters um that process hasn't happened yet with the new plan so i i i don't know what my judgment is on okay this worked or no it didn't work until after that after we get through the process but uh but it, i can assure you that that we just didn't leave eric and not have a plan in place i, I understand that uh but it seems to me that if you don't use the clearinghouse there 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 are really only two policy choices one is to try and coordinate with each and every one of the other 49 states and the other territories or B, take the meat axe approach, which which it seems like to me that, uh, that that Mac Warner has done a little bit too much of and just say, well, any question, you're off the rolls and it's on you to prove you belong back on there. And I'll tell you, I've, I've had a number of people complain to me that they got these, these notifications that they uh, it, uh, weren't on the rolls anymore and they didn't understand it. So I just wanted to call your attention to that. In case you get elected, uh, I would encourage you to consider getting back in Eric and trying to fix whatever problem was there. John, were these people who missed one election or hadn't voted in 20 years? Uh, the people complaining to you? Uh, no. Uh, in some, in, in a couple of cases, they were people that had voted in the last election. Well, that would be troubling. Uh, Jason. Yeah, and that surprises me that they were removed if they voted in the last election. So typically, typically what happens is, is you have to miss two federal elections, and then even after you miss the two federal elections, you're sent out that you're, – you're placed on the inactive list, okay? And then the county clerk will send a notification, a postcard, that it, uh, the same as the NCUA card. 
saying, hey, you, you've missed do you want to update your information because you've missed two elections? Are you still there? Do you still want to be on the rolls? So on a federal level, there is a lot of hoops to jump through to remove somebody from the rolls uh, completely uh, to where they cannot vote. Uh, and, and the process is, is a timely process. It takes pretty much about eight years, two federal elections, plus the postcard time frame, plus the time it takes to, to identify them and put them on the, on the list to get the postcard. So uh, that surprised me. But to answer your question, I, I'm an open-minded person. I will always look at everything. And, you know, just because something, that, uh, somebody says something is the way it is, doesn't mean that it, that's the way it is. So I'll always keep an open mind and try to make the decision as to what's best for the state of West Virginia and its voters when, when making these decisions. So nothing's off the table. But but uh, we want to. The main thing is we want to have safe, secure elections, and we want to make sure our voter rolls are clean. Brian, as of now, uh, all four Board of Public Works offices, uh, the incumbent is running for higher office: the Attorney General, Treasurer, Secretary of State, and Auditor. Can you talk a little bit about why your decision? Uh, is to run for Secretary of State. There, there's always, whenever there's these uh, vacant positions in these Board of Public Works, uh, everybody is looking for, for one of these offices to run for. So why did you choose Secretary of State? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, I, I, you know, this wasn't an easy choice for me. You know, it, was, it was something that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not in politics for, the, for the, the fame. I'm not in politics for the label. Uh, I, I just like people and, and want to serve people of Putnam County right now and hopefully the people of West Virginia. The reason why I chose Secretary of State, and, and these are important jobs. You know, this is not a on-the-job training position. These are positions that, you know, you don't hire a, a contractor to do your dental work, you know, on your teeth. You don't hire a dentist to build your house. Um, and in my case, uh, I've been training for this position for – uh, you know, four terms the, the last 18 years as, as county clerk. Basically, the Secretary of State is like the county clerk on just on steroids. It's just a, uh, a, lot, a lot bigger of a, of a program, a lot more employees. But from a standpoint of, you know, managing an office, managing employees, putting a good team together, knowing uh, the history. You know, I've worked under three different administrations of, of Secretary of State since I've been county clerk. So, I see all their styles. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. I, I know the team that's in, in place now. So I, I know, okay, uh, if if elected, this team, you know, th this is the team that's remaining versus who may leave or whatnot. Okay, this is the gaps we got to fill. This is what's coming up next on the agenda as far as what we have to get done to make sure we don't get behind and and uh, and and have things. I've been through two different uh, voting systems implementations. Uh, I've been through two redistrictings, uh, so I've got a lot of knowledge under my belt and in my head that 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 uh, you know, I don't know that any other candidate will have. I'm not the typical state candidate, you know. I'm, I come from the county. Uh, I, I love my county and I love West Virginia, and uh, uh, I'm just the average person that's wanting to give the average West Virginian an opportunity to vote for somebody that knows what they're doing, uh, who has history and. Uh, and uh, just wants to, you know, help out and, and fill one of these seats to make sure it's secure for the future of West Virginia. Brian, you spent some time in Charleston this past session championing a bill that um, <clears throat> ensures that counties maintain uh, enough money to upgrade voting machines. Can you talk a, a little bit about that bill and, and the importance of it to the counties? Yes, sir. And I appreciate the senator uh, that's with you today, Jason, for, um, for working with me on that as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the legislature and the counties have realized that, you know, we can't always depend on federal funds coming down, have a funds coming down to support and to pay for our local elections and local election equipment. And, and the state about two years ago had um, decided to uh, the, their portion of the transfer fees that we collect in the county clerk's office through recording of uh, deeds and stuff that they were going to give those back to that, that money back to the, the county. And it was a, a weaning off process between, uh, to, I believe it was 2000 to 2030. 
and uh, and so basically 10% per, per year. And we were in year two of that. So the counties have not received all that money yet. So it hasn't been earmarked for different things for, so that the county commissions wouldn't get hurt. But we knew that the money was coming. So I, I saw a need that, that we, we need to earmark some of this money, put it in a savings uh, in, 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 in savings account, so to speak, uh, on the county level for uh, the administration of the record rooms and also the administration of, of elections. Uh, I just replaced my batteries and my um, Ivotronics Expressway, excuse me, and my Expressboats. Ivotronics was the last version, and uh, you know it was a it was a sixty thousand uh, dollar bill. And not every county has that in their coffers. Well, we don't want the batteries going out in these during a presidential election. So this is this gives us. It's not a whole lot of money, but it gives uh, over time. Hopefully, it'll build. And then that'll be a pocket of money that the county can go to, to so that when they need that sixty thousand dollars to replace those batteries, so the uh, time's right on the the equipment, and that that you know if the lights go out, the voters still have an opportunity to vote, uh, they can do so. And so the legislature saw it, and uh, the the uh, county clerks throughout the state saw it, and I worked with Deke uh, Donald Kersey and in the um, in the Secretary of State's office to to draft this bill. And uh, and was lucky enough to get it passed. And 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 the beauty of it is, is it's, it's not an extra tax. It doesn't cost the taxpayers any money. It's basically just looking to the future with the money that we already have and that we already collect, and uh, placing it, it, earmarking it for something that's going to be a need for the counties in the future. It, Brian, as I remember, as we worked on this bill, there are some safeguards uh, in this bill. Uh, obviously, the Secretary of State kind of oversees the, the fund to ensure that the counties have enough money. But there are safeguards in there so that the county, once they have enough money in this fund to be able to, to do the upgrades uh, and, and reach a certain uh, benchmark of money, uh, that they're not, the county's not required then to continue to fund, to put money into this fund unnecessarily. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. So, so you know, uh, a county that's struggling to pay their bills. Once they reach that benchmark, there, you know, you don't have to keep putting money in this fund and not have the money to pay the bills on the other side. Uh, so basically, it it and and the secretary of state will promulgate the rules as to how much money that benchmark will be, and and that'll probably be based upon uh, what a new system would cost in those counties. You know, whether it be a class one county or a class you know, five county or class eight, whatever it may be. So class eight county is not going to need as much money to to redo their equipment as a class one county would. And so, yes, there's safeguards in there for that. Um, you, you must meet a minimum standards of uh, security um, prior to spending the money on anything else. So, um, and those, those standards will be dr- drawn up and met, uh, you know, those promulgated rules will be uh, through the secretary of state's office. So uh, it it all goes to securing our elections uh, for the future. Uh, the last thing I want to have happen is have a county clerk in the county who has a need um, to provide the citizens a safe and secure election and not have the money to do so. Uh, that would not be good. So so we're just looking towards the future, um, not just thinking of today and uh, and um, earmarking that money that's coming over that hasn't come over yet. So it's not hurting any other. Uh, outside agencies or anything like that um, and just earmarking the money that'll be coming in the future to place in these in these two funds uh, for the security of our elections and as well as our record rooms. Brian Wood, thank you so much for your time this morning. Very impressive resume, sir. Thank you, sir, and I appreciate the opportunity. I hope I get to speak to you all soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Brian Wood, Putnam County Clerk.